Hello everybody and welcome to today's Blender modeling tutorial how to model a toilet bowl. Now a toilet bowl is something we see and use every day and it possesses a very unique shape and internal pipe work. So I'm going to show you in this tutorial how to model a toilet bowl in Blender. So this is what the toilet bowl looks like when rendered in cycles. Okay, let's get started. Okay, start from a new scene, alright? And then we're going to try to transform this cube into a toilet bowl. Now first, we want to move the cube so that it's lined up with the grid lines here. So press G to move it to grab the cube, then lock in the Z axis and then press one blender unit. Okay, next you want to bring in image references. Now there are plenty of image references on the internet and one of the best one is this one, which shows the cross section of the toilet bowl. So I'm going to use that as a image reference to model my toilet bowl. So first, I'm going to bring in the image using the empty method. So just click, left click, mouse click on the grid, all right, anywhere else so that I can bring in, can create the uh, locator in this location. So press Shift A and select empty. All right, so now I can see the empty and in the empty object data options here, just click on it and instead of having it to display the plane axis, change it to image. And then we're going to browse through the directory or browse to the directory to find the image that we have downloaded. So I'm going to open and I'm going to navigate it to the folder containing the image. And I'm going to turn on my thumbnail so that I can pick the image that I want, which is this one. Double click on it. And now I can see the empty is displaying the image. Now first, I want to rotate it 90 degrees so that I can use it for references. So I'm going to press R followed by X, then press 9, 0, 90 degrees. Then I'm going to press R followed by Z, 90 degrees. Now depending on which image you use, you might have to rotate it in negative 90 degrees. So I like to position the image in this way so that the, the side is always facing the X axis. Okay, next, I want to scale it up so that I have a big enough reference for my toilet bowl. So I'm going to press S to scale it up. Okay, and then I'm going to manually just bring it down until the base is lined up to the, the grid lines here. Okay, next, I want to select the, the cube and I'm going to change its display properties by clicking here on the object tab here. And under the type, I'm going to change it to wire. All right. Now I'm going to press number three on my number pad to go to my side view. And I'm going to press number five to go to orthographic view. Now you can see the reference now it is at full opacity. I can select the image reference. And then I can go to the image tab here, the object data tab here. And I can reduce the transparency to half to 0.5 okay so that if I middle mouse click and drag in my perspective view I can actually see through it now I'm gonna push it back in the x-axis okay several units back okay and then I'm gonna prepare my cube so that I can start to model over this uh, image reference now for those of you who have seen my previous tutorials I like to model it model using the mirror method so I'm gonna select the cube Go to Edit Mode, press Tab, Control R, go to uh, Loop Cut. I'm going to cut halfway and then right mouse click so that the loop cut will jump back to the center. And then I'm going to delete half of the cube. So I'm going to go to Face Mode and select this face and then press Control Number Pad Plus to select to increase selection and then press X to delete away the faces. Next, I'm going to apply a mirror modifier. Okay. And I'm going to delete away the top and bottom faces. All right. Now, if you find it very confusing to select or you can't select through the faces, activate this button here. Okay. So that you can actually select through faces behind other faces. Like for example, this dot here can select, hold on to shift and select. So the top and bottom faces, I'm going to delete it as well. Okay. So you end up with a opened cube, all right? So this will be will form the basis for our toilet bowl. I'm going to insert one more edge loop here. 
Okay, so that we have one, two, three, four, five, five sides for this shape. And then because this is mirrored, I can pull this out so and I can select this two and then I scale it out slightly. Or rather I'm gonna scale it along the y-axis. Just scale it out so that it's got a round shape like this. Okay, this means that you can even start off with a cylinder if you like, a low resolution cylinder. Okay, now let's go to the side view, press number three to go to the side view. And I'm going to split this view so that I can change it to, I'm going to press T to hide the tools panel, and hide, press T to hide the tools panel here, then press 1 to go to the front view. Okay. So I'm going to minimize the front view a little bit, and then I'm going to start to move the shape to match the toilet bowl. So I'm going to go back to object mode for, for time being, just press uh, tab to go to object mode, then press G to grab the cube until it is lined up to the toilet bowl, like so. Alright, so now I'm going to select the bottom of the cube, right? Okay, I'm just going to temporarily go to a perspective view here, or orthographic view. And I'm going to select the bottom edge here, so I'm going to edit mode by pressing tab. Press Alt, right mouse click to select the bottom tab. And I'm going to scale it down. Now, if you scale it down right now, Okay, let me just maximize this view so you can see. If you scale it down right now, it's going to scale it according to the median point here. So if I scale it down, I'm going to create a gap here, which is not what I want. Okay, so let me undo that. I want it to scale right at the center here. So to scale it right at the center here, so I'm going to tab out to object mode. Okay, and then I'm going to press uh, Shift S to go to snap mode. And then I say, I'm going to say cursor to the selected. So the cursor will jump to the selected. Now, when I press tab to go to edit mode, and if I press this button here, below here, and change it to 3D cursor, so this time when I scale, when I press S to scale, it's going to scale along the position of the cursor. Alright? So this is the shape which I want. I want to get this uh, conical shape. Alright? So let's switch this back to the front view by pressing 1 and then okay I'm going to show you how I do that so now that we got this conical shape I'm gonna reshape this until it matches the bowl of the toilet alright so while it is still under the scale under the cursor axis so I'm gonna press scale it down a little bit more okay and then I'm gonna since the bottom is still being selected the bottom edge is still being selected I'm gonna press G to uh, grab it and move it down here okay and then I'm gonna press alt right mouse click to select the top edge loop and then I'm gonna press G and then just bring it down uh, to where the mouth of the toilet is and since we are still referencing scaling according or transforming according to the the position of the cursor I'm gonna just gonna press S to scale this up slightly and just bring it down like like so Okay, so now we want to create this unique pipe work here. You can see it flows down from here, then it goes up here, and then it comes down here. Alright, so I'm going to press Alt right mouse click to select the bottom loop again. But this time I'm going to left mouse click so the cursor is here. So I'm going to press R and you notice that I'm rotating. Make sure you're doing this in the right orthographic view, which is pressing number 3. Okay, so I'm going to rotate it until it's aligned to the pipework, this uh, angle of the pipework like this. And then I'm going to hold down to control and left mouse click to extrude one section out, like so. Alright. Okay, at this stage, let me remind you to turn on clipping. Turn on clipping in the uh, mirror modifier. Just turn it on so that if we accidentally move the sides out, the center will still be clipped together. Right. So as you can see, when I press Ctrl and left mouse click, it extrudes the select, selected portion out. All right, and this time I want to change this back to median point. Okay, since median point is now selected, or rather the clipping is now selected and the median point is selected, if I were to change the scale, the center portion will still be stuck together. All right, so I can simply scale the, just press S to scale it in, in the side view here, and then press R to rotate to match the shape or thickness of the pipework. And then I'm going to just press Ctrl and then left mouse click to extrude another section. 
then press S to scale it down. Control, left mouse click to extrude. Alright, then press S to scale it up a, a bit. Control, left mouse click. Then press R to rotate, and then press S to scale it up. Control, left mouse click. Okay, and then press R to rotate here. Press S to scale it up a little bit. And so on. So I'm just going to carry on. Control and left mouse clicking to create the pipe work here. And finally, the exit point. So if I were to select the object, let me go to object mode by pressing tab, and then I'm just going to temporarily change, tem temporarily change it back to the textured mode. You can see that we have the internals of the toilet bowl being worked out. Okay, at this stage, you can add a subdivision, okay, modifier by pressing Control One. So we subdivided one level. You can press Control Two, Three to subdivide it even more. So you can see the shape of the toilet bowl is coming out rather nicely. And if you go to press Tab to go to Edit Mode, and because our initial model the resolution is rather low, okay, let me just maximize this view here, okay, by dragging it here to show you. Since the resolution is still rather low, we can go to vertex mode and we can reshape this until we get a nicer rounded shape. Right? Okay, so I'm, I'm very happy with this. Uh, the bottom actually looks quite nice. In fact, it looks kind of like a, a real toilet bowl. Right? So from this shape, we can actually start to build or encompass and create the basic shape of the toilet bowl. Okay, and to give it a smooth look, okay, I'm going to press T to bring out my mesh tools. And I'm going to press A to select everything. Press A a few times to select all the, the shapes here. And then go and choose shading smooth. So now everything looks nice and smooth. Okay, so now just to show you how simple it is, I'm just going to select the edge. And I'm going to start to extrude sections of the toilet bowl. And then I'm going to just slowly encompass it. So let's just work on this uh, orthographic view. So I'm going to, going to deselect everything, just press A. Then Alt, right mouse click to select the edge here. And here's where positioning the, uh, the cursor is important. So let me just split the view into two again. Hide the tools. And this view, I'm going to change it to side view. And this one into the front view. I'm going to left mouse click and place a cursor here. And if you press Shift S and cursor to grid, it's going to snap to the closest grid section here. This will help you center the position of the cursor. All right. So now I know that this is centered to the blue line. In the side view, I can just left mouse click here. All right. And what I want to do is I just want to extrude another section to encompass the rim of the toilet bowl. So I'm just going to press E to extrude one section out. Right mouse click, so it snaps back to place. Then left mouse click and drag the arrow manipulator. Okay, and then I'm going to use the reference point. Instead of median, I'm going to change it to cursor. Now the shortcut key is the period. If you press the period, okay, you will switch it to referencing to the cursor. Alright, and then I'm going to just scale this in slightly by pressing S to scale it in. Okay, and then I'm going to press E again to extrude, and this time I'm going to pull, pull it out a little bit. And then I'm going to press S again to scale it out. Okay, so we can get this rounded shape here. Okay, I think I've scaled it up a little bit too much. I'm going to scale it back a bit. Just pull this out. And then because I'm at the side view, I can left mouse click it to bring the cursor here. Right about here. Okay. And then I'm going to press E to extrude again. And I'm going to press S to scale it out. And you can see the top part of the toilet bowl is starting to come into place. Now, if you find that the shaded mode is very hard to see, okay, I can force the object 
to display as wire all the time. So while it is being selected in object mode, okay, click on wire, all right, and then I'm gonna press Control One to reduce the subdivision so it's easier to see. Press Tab to go to edit mode, right, and then we can continue to model the exterior of the toilet bowl. All right, so I'm going to select this two vertices here, holding down the shift, select these two vertices on top here, and I'm just simply going to move them move them back. All right, and then I'm going to select this section here. I'm going to pull it out a little bit. Okay, so I can create a flat surface on top, just like that. And then I'm going to press Alt, right mouse click to select the entire edge here. And I'm just simply going to press E to extrude. Alright, and you can pull it down here, like so. And you can press... Okay, I'm going to change this back to shaded mode so that you guys can see. Because I think it'll be very hard to see. So you can see just now, I just pulled that back and then I just pull down one section like so. Okay, just extrude it and select the edge and pull it down like that. And then just press E again to extrude. Right mouse click and you see the, edge, the extruded edge jumps back. And then I'm just going to pull this down slightly. Now you remember, if you want to see the wireframe through, you have to activate this button here. The limit selection to visible. Alright. And now with this extra section, extruded, you can actually press S to scale it down slightly. Okay, and because our cursor is here, it's, it's always scaling towards here. Now I can left mouse click to place the cursor here, and then you'll scale towards here. And I'm going to press E again to extrude another section. Right mouse click so the extruded section jumps back, and then I'm going to use the manipulator to pull it down. Then press S again to scale it inwards. Okay, and then press E again to extrude, and then I'm just going to pull it down. Okay, right now you're basically you're designing your own uh, toilet bowl. Okay, you can change the manipulator into a scaling manipulator. I'm going to scale it inwards like so. Okay, and then I'm going to press E again. Right mouse click. Now I've developed this habit where every time I press E, I'm going to right mouse click so it, the extruded edge jumps back. Then I'm going to pull this section down like so. Okay, so now we have the toilet bowl, the main section of the toilet bowl created. Now we want to extrude this section outwards. Alright, so I'm going to press E to extrude, but I'm going to right mouse click so that the edge snaps back again. And I'm going to use the uh, shrink flatten mode to move this edge outwards. So you press Alt S. Okay, and because you notice the because the cursor is very high up, it's going to branch branch outwards, extrude outwards this angle. So I'm going to right mouse click so that the edge jumps back. I'm going to switch to the side view and then left mouse click the cursor right about here. And now watch what happens when I press Alt S to use the shrink flatten. Alt S and now I can see Okay, so it is still extruding downwards like this. Apparently, uh, repositioning the cursor doesn't affect the Alt S. So right now, it appears that it is extruding based on the normals. So if you want it to extrude outwards, okay, let me undo that. You change it to scale. So I'm going to press S to scale it. And you can see now it is scaling based on on where the location of the cursor is. Okay, so you can press S and then followed by X to limit the scale to the X axis. Okay, so now I'm just going to press S and scale everything down slightly again. And now I'm just going to create the base of the toilet bowl. I'm going to press E to extrude, right mouse click so it snaps back to place and then grab the Z manipulator and pull it down. Press E again to extrude and then press S to scale it down slightly, all right, inwards. Okay, and again, I'm going to reposition my cursor so it's about here, all right. And now, watch what happens when I press E to extrude, E to extrude, right mouse click, stand back to place, and then press S, and then you scale towards the cursor. And get this, okay, because we have the same number of faces here and same number of faces from the hole, we can actually join them together. Okay, so how do you do that? 
well there are many ways okay I'm gonna show you the fill method okay I'm gonna just position this vertex okay I'm gonna switch this back to median point again so that I can move the individual uh, vertices down like so position it close to the corresponding points of the internal piping all right so all you have to do is to change to edge mode all right select opposing edges all right and then press F okay select opposing edges and press F to fill it up opposing edges press F and so on and we are done so now there's a there's a hole for the water and rest of the stuff to come out all right I'm gonna press ctrl R and then insert one edge loop down here and ctrl R really tighten the hole okay now you can spend time some time to make it look round of course okay but let's continue with the rest of the tutorial now of course if you're happy with this your toilet bowl is essentially done but of course I want to make it look nicer now I'm gonna switch it back to wireframe mode okay and then I'm okay what I did was I press Z so now it's in wireframe mode and I'm gonna go to vertex mode and then I'm just gonna press A a couple of times to select and deselect and then just gonna tweak this until it matches the cross section of the toilet bowl okay at this point you can also use a non-uniform modifier so with one vertex selector you press O right and then press G so you roll your mouse inwards to increase push out to reduce okay so you can use your uh, non-uniform modifier to deform the shape of your toilet bowl okay so let's take a look at it okay let me subdivide it three times actually it doesn't look too bad it's sort of got a designer look to it a very streamlined now of course if you want the bottom edge to be much harder looking you can insert more edge loops but you have to be very careful I'll show you what I mean you press ctrl R and insert edge loops okay let me undo that I don't want to insert edge loops internally I want to insert edge loops outside so ctrl R and insert one edge loop here and now you can see that this corner here is a bit sharper but you notice that because of the edge loops when there are two edges that are too close together you're gonna get this nasty looking creases now to fix this you can go to edge mode all right select this edge then press ctrl E to go to edge options and then go to edge slide then you can slide this edge until this section here appears much more rounder okay so same thing over here if you want to insert one more edge loop here ctrl R I'm gonna insert one edge loop here okay you can see now the the shape of the toilet bowl now looks a bit suspect right well, it looks kind of interesting though all right so you can still select this edge here this edge here and then this edge here and then you can manually okay my proportional editing is still on let me undo that press O to deselect that deselect the uh, proportional editing and then I'm just gonna manually pull this out select these edges here and then just pull it out so naturally you're gonna spend some time to edit this until you get the shape that you want all right control E edge slide this one okay and you can even edge slide uh, vertices for example if I'm gonna switch over the vertex mode and then press shift V and then move the cursor to the edge that you want to move okay shift V and then left click here and so on all right Okay, I'm gonna fix this edge here until you get a nicer rounded edge. Okay, let me just switch to vertex mode. Probably faster to select it that way and in wireframe mode reduce the amount of subdivision. Press B to box select, select this section here. Okay, go to the top view, go to shaded mode. So I press G and then I'm going to manually move this A to this leg and I'll now try this section here B to G to move and now 
Okay, so you can tweak it until you get a nice rounded shape. So okay, so now let's say I'm I'm done with this. Okay, I don't want to tweak this anymore. I'm happy with this. Now how do I create the uh, what do you call that? The toilet seat. Now of course, if you want this to be flatter, you can in, in just extrude another section here. So I'm just gonna go to face face mode alt right mouse click to select this uh, face loop alt right mouse click and select this face loop and you can actually press E to extrude another section so now it's got a nice uh, flat top I'm gonna press S Z, Z followed by 0 to totally make it flat so you got a nice flat surface that you can lay your bottom on alright so how do we cre create the toilet seat alright Remember, we are still in our mirrored mode. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to quickly create the toilet seat. Okay, let me maximize this perspective view so you can see much clearly. So with the top faces selected, all right, you can actually duplicate this, all right, by pressing Shift D, Shift D, and then another section will pop up like so. All right, and then I'm just gonna modify this shape by going to edge mode, select this edge here, and then select this edge here, and push it back like so. All right, you can see where I'm going on from here, and then I want to separate this section which I've just duplicate out. All right, so I'm gonna press, I'm gonna hover the cursor over it, and then I'm gonna, with one section selected, and then press L to select linked object and then I'm going to press P to peel it off or to separate the object press P and say choose selection okay so now you can see the object is separated so I'm going to press tab to go to object mode I'm going to select this section and I'm going to fash refashion it into a toilet seat all right go to edit mode okay while it is still being selected all right I'm going to tweak the shape a bit so that it covers the uh, the top of the toilet bowl Right, I'm going to select the edges here and I'm going to use my cursor trick again I'm going to click on the cursor here shift S cursor the grid so it snaps to the center and then I'm going to the side view and I'm going to click here shift S cursor the grid alright and then I'm going to enable the 3D cursor again I'm going to press S to scale it towards the cursor okay Right, so I'm going to do the same for the outside. Right, Alt, right mouse click, select the outer edge, except this one. I do not want to select this one and this one. Hold down the Shift, right mouse click to deselect. Right, and then I'm going to press S to skid out slightly. Okay, I'm going to tweak this a little bit. Switch this back to median point again, and then push it back. Alright, so. I've scaled this up a little bit. Okay, maybe I should close this uh, front window. I don't need it now. All right, and then I'm going to press A to select everything, and I'm going to press E to extrude. Just going to extrude one shape outwards like that. Okay, and then once you extrude, you notice the center looks a bit funny because we've created central faces which we need to get rid of. So go to Control Tab, go to Face, select the faces here, and press X to delete away the faces. And we need to fine tune this a little bit more. Control R to insert a couple of edge loops. One here. And then another one here. Okay, and I think this looks good enough. Now, when you separate an object, the center will be referenced from uh, the object that it was originally separated from. So if I want to do change the center to another location okay I'm gonna to go to side view for example I want to move the center of this toilet seat here so first you click on the cursor left mouse click it here and then bring out the tools panel make sure the object is selected then scroll upwards in the tools panel here there is this origin button here click on it and choose the option origin alright to 3d cursor click on it okay so now you shifted it now because we are doing this on a mirrored object make sure that the origin is exactly at the center so you need to do the shift s uh, snap to grid option 
Otherwise, the uh, mirror will perform in a very weird sense. For example, if I were to click the center here, let's say I left mouse click it here, and I just want to show you as an example, and then go to origin, origin to 3D cursor, and you're going to end up with a shape looking like this. So you want to avoid that by positioning the cursor right at the center. So let me just control Z to undo. And right now, because our cursor, our origin is here, if I were to press R to rotate, you can see that the toilet seat now is rotating at the correct axis, right? So I'm just going to position this down until it rests here. Now, if you want to create pipe work for the system, right, you can select the original toilet bowl again, and then go to Edit Mode, go to Face Mode, select the face, and then press E to extrude, then press S to scale it down, and position this further back a little bit, and go to Edge Mode. I'm going to push this edge back here. like so and I'm gonna delete away this face and then you have a hole to start to extrude some pipe work out okay extrude one section here then press E again to extrude another section E again and then just scale it down E again to extrude another section like so okay so you can stick your system on top of this Alright, so essentially that's how you model a toilet bowl. Now, let me show you quickly how I set up the uh, cycles renderer. So first, you need to assign a cycles material to this. Now remember, your toilet bowl is still half a toilet bowl, so you need to apply a modifier in order to make it a single object. All right. So I'm just going to show you quickly. Uh, to use the uh, cycles rendering engine, you need to turn on the cycles renderer here. Okay. So if you switch on to render now, you're not going to see much, okay, because the default light is not going to light it up very well. Okay, so I'm going to go back to wireframe mode. And I'm just going to create another plane, Shift A, create a mesh plane object. I'm going to use this to illuminate the toilet bowl. Right, I'm going to go to front view and then press R to rotate it. And I'm going to press S to scale this up. Okay, remember, uh, just imagine this like a photographic uh, studio light, soft light. I'm going to bring this GZZ in its local Z-axis. I'm going to bring it up so it's pointing down here. So now we've got one light source. We need to apply a special material to this board called Emission. So click on your Material Editor, right? And then create a new material. And because you're in Cycles Render Mode, you, you're going to get Cycles Materials. So instead of a diffuse material, I'm going to give it a emission material. And I'm going to bump up the strength to maybe about 5 units, just for testing purposes. And I'm going to create, I'm going to press Shift-C Shift, Shift -C to bring the cursor to the bottom again. Then press Shift-A to create another plane. Press S to scale it up so that it will act as a floor surface. I'm going to select both my toilet bowl and the toilet seat. And I'm going to shift it up until it rests on this temporary temporary plane surface okay and I don't need this reference anymore so I can I'm gonna delete it away I'm also gonna delete away this light this lamp because it is useless in the cycles environment and for this surface I'm gonna give it a vanilla diffuse surface I'm gonna give it a maybe a beige color and for my uh, toilet bowl I'm gonna give it a glossy surface I'm gonna create a new material new material and then I'm gonna give it a glossy surface alright and then for the toilet seat cover I'm gonna create another material and I'm gonna give it now if you notice each of the materials right, it has a material here this is the previous blender material now I'm gonna get rid of this original blender material because it might affect it might uh sort of interfere with the uh, object so now we are left with the blender material so we got a glossy and we have a diffuse I'm gonna change this into a glass material oh wait let's try a mixed shader so which consists of a glass material and a diffuse material 
Okay, so here's here's where the fun part comes. Now you need a very fast processor or fast graphics card in order to have a very good feedback. So I'm going to turn on cycles rendered. Okay, so you can see. Okay, the light is not sufficient. I'm going to right mouse click and select the plane, and then I'm going to increase it to maybe 15 units. All right, so now it's looking pretty interesting. We got a chrome toilet bowl. Okay, because I set my rendering samples to 10, you can see a lot of noise here. Okay, and in order to speed up my rendering, let me click on the renderer here. Under my integrator, I'm going to set the, uh, the preview to 20, 20 samples. Under the performance, my tile, I'm going to set both the tile size and minimum size to the same figure, 1024. Okay, so this will actually help to speed up the rendering a little bit. Okay, so you must be in the rendered mode in order to see this. So right now I'm just going to play the materials uh, for the cover. I'm going to give it a weird green color. Oh, this is the body. So I'm going to change it back to gold. Okay, now we have a golden toilet. I'm going to press go to wireframe mode temporarily so that to make sure that I have selected my toilet seat. Okay, and I'm going to give it a sort of a reddish color. And then uh, for the diffuse, I'm going to give it a dark green. Let's go to shaded mode and or rather rendered mode to see what happens. Okay, so now you got this super expensive looking toilet bowl, all thanks to cycles the amazing cycles from blender okay so just keep on experimenting and play with blender as you can see blender can produce quite amazing imagery and i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and i hope that you learned some new tricks and uh, thanks for watching and keep on subscribing